Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Community Voices. Hope everybody's doing good. You know, this March it is still Women's History Month, and we're continuing to celebrate Women's History Month, continuing to uplift, celebrate women this month. And um, just once again, paying attention to the her, her heritage part of things, you know, honoring uh, her past, the things that she's been through, the things that make her who she is today, and the things of today that are going to make her propel for the future. And today I'm really excited to be joined by somebody whose career has been phenomenal. Uh, and they've been, they've done so much. Like it seems like times has been going by. They've been winning Grammys, making like extremely mm -hmm. good music. They've had some really crazy features on their on their tracks as well. Um, and somebody who I, music I actually personally enjoy. So today I'm so excited to be not uh, to be here with artist, songwriter, Grammy Award winner, Ombre. Thank you for joining us today. How you feeling? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Um, I want to, you know, speaking about uh, Women's History Month, how we talked about the heritage piece, I want to kind of tap in and understand, you know, I would love to know what was that early moment in your life when you kind of realized that the, the passion and love and that pull that you had for music. I know in uh, earlier on, you were involved in music. Um, mm -hmm. like, how was the thing since a child you were actually involved in music uh, and singing and things like that? Um, when did it? When did you like realize that you want to do professionally? It was more than a passion. You wanted to make it a career. Um, I think sometime uh, when I was in high school um, was when I realized I, I wanted to like take it seriously. Um, I basically sang at like a talent show at this like pep rally or whatever, and um, the whole school just kind of like cheer for me and I feel like they really enjoyed what I did and it made me realize that I just kind of want to keep doing that. I love that. It's those little, those little early moments when you just kind of find and discover those things and you're like, man, I can make maybe take this somewhere. This can really be something. Yeah. Uh, that's like super special. Now you're from one of my favorite places in America, New Orleans. Uh mm -hmm. Louisiana. Um love, love Louisiana. I have a lot of history there myself as well. Um, but it's such a place of like rich culture, the music, the art. Um, I mean, it's just like there's like a certain level of realness that you can just feel when you when you move throughout the state and the city and things like that. Um, yeah. How did that like shape you as a person? I know, you know, our environment, our city, um, that culture shapes into what we do, into our art and things like that. How did it kind of shape you as a person? How do you how do you feel like it, that that seeps out um, intentionally and unintentionally in your music and your art? Um, I feel like it shaped me very, um, I guess, subconsciously um, in a way that it's just, like you said, it's a very real and raw place. So subconsciously in that sense, like, I like to be very raw in my music. And just as a person, just like, I feel like growing up in a place like New Orleans, like, it made me um, value just authenticity and um I just was exposed to a lot of um I don't know like tradition I would say um mm -hmm. and a lot of different um styles of music mm. and like yeah those things really kind of shaped me as an artist and yeah <laughs> I don't know if I can really explain like heavily in detail right now, but um, I would say that every everything that I am is because I'm from New Orleans, you know. I love that. I said I, I totally get you. Like I said, it's it's the you can't help but to pick up some of that. You can't help but to pick up whether it's the the the. the, the the like you know the words whether it's just like the, the feeling the, or there's always there's something to pick up it's like an energy almost that you can kind of pick up yeah. and, and take with you everywhere you go um so i definitely get you definitely answered that it definitely makes a lot of sense um i watched an interview yesterday um i can't quite remember which which interview it was but she had asked about your tour life and you're talking about how like you know it it, it goes by so fast and like you know you had you can barely even take in those moments and I think that's like a common thing too, because tour you're from city to city, performing, giving energy, just constantly kind of giving. And um, I would love to know for you, with 
who are life being so exhausting and being so taxing on the body and mentally and physically, but you still do all every night and do those kind of things. How do you personally find the balance to kind of give that energy, then like kind of reset yourself to kind of restore it? And then do you ever take time to reflect on those moments? There's so many different people you're running into, different experiences, shows, being in the city even before you perform. Like, do you ever take a time to also reflect on those moments? Um, yeah, I definitely take time to reflect, at least whenever I remember to. But um, I think how I maintain the balance is just remembering why I'm doing what I'm doing. And sometimes remembering don't really happen until I'm on the stage and I see how people are receiving me or whatever. And that kind of it's like a constant reminder of why, you know what I'm saying, why I'm doing music and why I'm on the road performing. And just a reminder to also not take it for granted. Mm, I feel that. Do you ever, do you ever feel like, um, mm. how do you kind of find yourself putting some of that energy you're giving back out, back into yourself while you're on tour? Is it kind of like a natural thing or how do you kind of navigate with that? Um, I don't know. I, maybe it is a natural thing. Um, I don't know. Maybe just kind of getting rest whenever I can. Mm. That rest is um, really important. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the, the adrenaline is like it. It can take you a long way. I, I feel that. I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Because sometimes that, that just the moment that that stepping on stage, mm -hmm. that hearing the crowd, it just can like flip a switch and it's just mm -hmm. on. So yeah. I, I can definitely get that. Um, you know, this is Community Voices. I know also, you know, we're talking about your career and things that you've done. We're also uh, speaking to the thing that you've done outside of music. I mean, music touches so many people and affects everybody so, so differently and has a really big impact. Um, but what's also just as equally as important is the work that you do, you know, off the track um, and the things that, you know, the communities that you touch and the people that you help. And today we'll be... Um, Continuing to do the work with Community Voices, and we'll be donating to uh, charity Eternal Seeds. Um, for those who aren't as familiar with Eternal Seeds, um, Eternal Seeds is about inspiring, educating, and empowering. Uh, they really center all their work around education, empowerment, and the preservation of New Orleans Black history and culture with like a really rich focus on uh, young and emerging artists. And it's harnessing that power and that creative expression um, and community so it can continue to thrive and grow. Um, I would love to, you know, can you kind of tell me what that mission just means to you? Um, I feel like that mission is something that is missing in a lot of communities and it can really solve, I mean, maybe not solve, but just kind of like ease a lot of problems mm -hmm. that, you know, young people face with just not having anywhere to release um, their energy and, and just their thoughts or whatever and just express freely. So to me, it means like the future generation can have something that wasn't really available to me mm -hmm. as a kid. So I like that. Those just, I think those things are, are super important and you never really know how much they affect uh, people earlier on. Having that outlet, having that place, having that thing to do outside of, you know, whatever else may be going on in your life, uh, stress or whatever um, issues are probably going to be going on. There's another place to kind of like, I don't know, just channel a different energy, bring a different, build, breathe a different life into that person. So I, I love that it does that. Um, and I also know that Terminal Seas was partnering um, with Magnolia Project to support uh, youth and foster care, which I think is extremely important to get the phenomenal work as well. Um, can you tell us more about the Magnolia Project too as well? Um, yeah, so it's something that is very much like in the baby stages, like, um, but we had a chance to work with Eternal Seeds in, I guess, a couple months ago or whatever. And um, we were able to donate uh, some things to some kids and give them an experience of um being around people who are from the same place that they're from and um, just to show them what outlets 
are available to them that they might not, you know, get a chance to experience um, in their regular life, I guess. Uh, but it's something that means a lot to me um, because it's something that is personal, personal to me and my, you know what I'm saying, growing up, like I said, I wish something like that existed when I was a kid. So it's just kind of like a passion project for me. Um, I wanted to grow and expand. You know, I don't only want to do things for like one area of youth. I just really want to just like give to the youth and nur nurture just energy. I don't know if that really explains. No, just that does. Like, yeah, I just really feel like mental health is very important and we can't really stop issues or problems from happening, but like we can ease those things by having outlets and, you know, just giving back whenever we can, you know? Absolutely. And I love that. I think you spoke to it perfectly too. Cause I think, like I said, it's the, the work that, that, you know, that it does is so important. Um, I think sometimes it's also maybe even be hard to see how important it is because you never know what that kid's going to take away into their life, the things that we don't see, but the change that it actually brings them the next day or the week later, whichever it is, it's just like super important Um, and why those moments are just so impactful. And I, and I love that like you had the passion to continue to do that, not just for the city, but even further out. Um, Cause I do think, and I, I truly believe, and I can hear, I can hear it when you speak to it too, that, you know, sometimes we go through certain things so that when our time comes to help the people in those situations, we can be more impactful and they can be in a better place than where we were, what we had to go through. So I think that piece that you spoke to there is like literally the purpose of why we're able to do these things and have that platform and then give back. Like, what else are you doing? If you're not just doing it for yourself, what else are you doing? So I love that you spoke to that. For sure. Um. One thing I want to talk about, too, is that, you know, I think you've actually spoke to it perfectly as far as um, continuing to build it out. And I guess that's kind of what I really want to ask is that, you know, in, in, in like your, your 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 perfect world, you continue growing with the music. How would you plan to continue to grow it out, to continue to like touch, uh, touch these different communities and continue to just have that impact beyond the city? Um, that's something I'm still... <laughs> working out in my head but um I want to just involve and collaborate with other people who are trying to do the same thing mm -hmm. and um just add to communities in whichever way that needs to be done honestly like um yeah that's really it I just want to like connect with people help people a build with people that's like the center of everything around it. I love that. And it's the only way you grow, that connecting and networking and, and, and making those different connections with different organizations and different people. It's really the key to growing and having a further impact. So I, I, I think that's, that's, that's super fire. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, ask a couple more things before we wrap it up. I know you're also really busy as well. Um, your three EPs deep into your career still rising as well like this is i mean like you're not even we're not even close to a peak yet like you're still rising um what has been one of the most impactful moments um in that time that kind of led you to be in the ombre that we see today what would you say is that moment for you uh, Grand I don't, yeah yeah i feel like um I don't believe that there's one particular moment that led me to be who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's just like a combination of everything that I've done, the work that I've put in, and honestly, the work that my team put in and the people that like support me and believe in what I'm doing. Um, I think just ha having that, consistency and um just I don't know celebrating the the little things and just having intention I feel like that's what really led me to be who I am and to is going to lead me to who I'm going to become I love that it's just a culmination of everything that really like 
helps the evolving, like the involvement of like, you know, to become who you are. So I definitely feel that. Definitely feel that. Especially because there's so, and, there, and there's just so many moments with the team around you, the thing that you do, there's mm-hmm. people, you know, who are also in your life that are special. Those, all those things that just come together. So yeah. I, I love they, that. They I just they they definitely add up and like create the bigger picture. I feel exactly. Most definitely. Most definitely. Now I want to ask you one more question before we ready to wrap things up. Um, to me, I think. We probably see it through life, but you see it in your career. Life is the constant pursuit of growth, whether it's through your career or careers, how we're trying to grow there, whether it's just, you know, our mental and physical health, how we try to grow and take care of ourselves and be better. Um, or if it's just in life, just, you know, as, as a person, as a spirit, as an energy. Um, I would love to notice for the women who aspire to be that future sing, uh, singer, that future songwriter, that future artist, creator, entrepreneur, um, what advice from your experiences in life and the experiences that you've had so far, what advice would you give to them about overcoming um, in their life and just having that faith um, in themselves that, you know, things will work in their favor as, as they, as they continue to do? Um, my advice would be to study. Um, I feel like visualizing the life that you want, it's is really powerful and just like if you could find somebody that is an example of, of what you might want to be or at least close to it, just study like how that person got there, what they're doing, and just like do that daily. Do it every day until you feel better and confident because that's the only way, you know what I'm saying, you're gonna portray that confidence and that faith and to in order to believe in order for other people to believe in you, you have to believe in yourself. And the only way for you to believe is if, you know, you have confidence in your abilities. And that takes practice and, you know, just studying it, ex, you know, experience that you give yourself by practicing. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more that that just like, you know, just understanding that, yeah, it's yeah, study it. Just study, understand what you want, knowing it, um, understanding the ins and outs. And then, of course, just having that, like you said, the most important piece, having that belief in yourself. You believe in yourself, but others don't believe in you. I mean, that's really what matters the most, because that's how you can show and tell and show and prove. So mm-hmm. I'd love to be able to speak to that. I appreciate you. For sure. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for cutting out time to, to join us. Um, I'm super excited. Like I said, this is, we're not even near the peak. Like, we are still going crazy with the music. I can still see that just the, the, the career achievements and the artistry growing and improving. Not even not improving, but just, I can see you still having fun with it, enjoying it, taking it in, still growing. And Definitely I'm, improving. <laughs> I, you know, actually, yeah, we're all improving. I think there's nothing wrong with improving. That's what life is about, that pursuit of growth. So I love it. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you. Um, and thank you, everybody for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. Until next time, take care. Peace. Thank you.